Of course, when we talk of non-redox reactions, these are reactions wherein you don't experience any change in the oxidation numbers of the species. So the oxidation numbers of the species remains unchanged, okay? And a typical example of a non-redox reaction is a neutralization reaction. A neutralization reaction is a reaction wherein an acid reacts with a base to give us salt and water only. So let's say here we have an acidic substance, HCl, reacting with a base, sodium hydroxide. So if these two species react, what happens? We are going to get this hydrogen here is going to be displaced by this sodium. And the sodium combines with the salt to give us sodium chloride. And then this hydrogen displaced reacts with the hydroxyl to give us water. Okay, so this is an example of a non-redox reaction. Now let's assign oxidation numbers. The oxidation number of hydrogen here is plus one, chlorine minus one, sodium here is plus one, the oxygen here minus two, hydrogen plus one, sodium plus one, chlorine minus one, hydrogen plus one, and oxygen minus two. So you discover here that there is no change in the oxidation numbers of the species, okay? So being that there is no change in oxidation number of the species, so that tells you in this particular reaction, it is not electrons that are transferred, rather it is protons that are being transferred, okay? As we learned from the bronsted lorry's definition of an acid, that an acidic substance is a substance that donates a proton. So meaning it is protons that are being transferred. So the proton is being transferred by the hydrochloric acid. Another example we can look at also is the process of coordination, formation of complexes. So we call them dative or coordinate bond. So we look at coordination. Coordination bond. So in this situation, a typical example of coordination bond is reacting ammonia and HCl. When ammonia reacts with HCl, what happens? This hydrogen is going to be given away to the ammonia. Ammonium ion that will be formed and then you get the chloride ion. So this is also an example of a non-redox reaction, okay? And this non-redox, if we want to verify that the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one, oxidation number of nitrogen is going to be minus three, oxidation number of hydrogen plus one, that of chlorine here minus one, hydrogen here plus one, and this nitrogen is going to be minus three because four multiplied by one gives us plus four, so transpose over becomes minus four. Minus four plus one is minus three, and this chlorine already a monoatomic ion having its oxidation number to be equal to its charge. So we look here, no change in oxidation number. So this is also a non-redox reaction. So we have it to be a non-redox reaction. So meaning the formation of complexes or coordinated compounds are non-redox reactions. Next, we look at half equations. Of course, we said earlier that redox reactions are complementary processes. They are simultaneous, meaning if oxidation takes place in a particular reaction, reduction should also take place in the particular reaction, okay? So if that is the case, we will represent these into half equation. A half equation is an equation that shows us separately the species that have either undergone oxidation or the species that have undergone reduction. So for the one that have undergone oxidation, we refer to it as the oxidation half equation. It shows us the species that have lost electrons or the species that have accepted oxygen or the species that have lost hydrogen. And the reduction half shows us the species that have gained an electron or the one that have gained hydrogen and the one that have lost oxygen. So we say they show separately species that have either oxidized or species that have reduced. 
So let's look at the oxidation half equation. So this one shows us the species that have lost electrons. Example, let's look at sodium here. Sodium solid will become sodium ion after losing an electron. Okay, so this indicates that this is an oxidation half equation. So the second example, okay, let's say here we have copper becoming Cu2 plus after losing two electrons. So this was an example of an oxidation half. Or we say here the chloride ion becoming Cl2 after losing two electrons. So this is also an example of an oxidation half equation. So we look at the reduction half equation. So like the oxidation half equation, the reduction half equation shows us the species that have undergone reduction by gaining electrons. So this is what the reduction half is about. Let's look at some examples. Let's say here in this situation, we have nitrogen atom gaining three electrons to become the nitride ion, okay? Or let's say you have copper ion gaining two electrons to become metallic copper. Or you have the oxygen atom gaining two electrons to become the oxide ion. So these are examples of reduction half equation showing us species gaining electrons to become reduced after gaining the electrons so next up we will look at balancing redox reactions to balance redox reactions we can do that in two medias that is the acidic medium and the alkaline medium and mind you, these equations can be balanced by blending the oxidation half and the reduction half. So we have the acidic medium and the alkaline medium. For the WIAC exams, it is the ion electron method that is the accepted method. Okay? We are going to look at these two media and how we can balance it. So we are going to start with the acidic medium and see how the acidic medium works. There are rules that we are going to look at in balancing redox reactions. Now, rule number one is we are going to assign oxidation numbers. So, rule number two, we identify the species that have oxidized and reduced, and then we write half equations. Rule number three, we are going to balance the species other than oxygen or hydrogen. Rule number four, we balance for oxygen by adding water to the side with less oxygen. And the fifth rule, you balance for hydrogen by adding the hydrogen ions. Rule number six, after balancing this, you balance the charges. So you balance the charges by adding electrons, okay? So the side with the highest charge. And rule number seven, you match electrons lost and gain, and you cancel common stuff. These are the rules that we are going to apply to balance redox reactions in an acidic medium. So let's look at some examples. 
For us to balance this redox reaction, we are going to assign oxidation numbers. As the rule says, we assign oxidation numbers to the species. And this is a monoatomic ion, so the oxidation number is plus 2. Here, oxygen's oxidation number is minus 2. And manganese oxidation number is plus 7. Monoatomic ion, the oxidation number is equal to the charge. This also oxidation number equal to the charge. So now that we've assigned oxidation numbers, we are going to write the half equations. So we start with the oxidation half. So the oxidation half, we identify the species that have oxidized. So you see here, ions charge from plus 2 to plus 3, the charge have increased. Manganese from plus 7 to plus 2, the charge have decreased. So that tells us here that ion have increased in charge. So meaning it is the species that oxidized. So we say Fe2 plus became Fe3 plus. So here you have one mole of ion and here also one mole of ion. So the atoms are balanced. You check the charges. The charge we have on the reactant side is plus 2. The charge on the product side is plus 3. So the difference between 2 and 3 is 1. The charge here is plus 2. Charge here plus 3. So the difference between this is 1. So meaning we are going to add 1 electron because we said to balance the charge, we add electrons. So we're going to add an electron to the side with the highest charge because adding an electron here means we are subtracting by 1. And if we subtract by 1, the numbers now become balanced because plus 3 minus 1 is plus 2. So you have plus 2 here and plus 2 here. So this one is now balanced. We write down the reduction half. The reduction half, we have the tetraoxomanganate 7 ion reducing into manganese ion. So in this situation, we have to balance this. How do we go about balancing this? We first of all balance atoms that are not oxygen or hydrogen. We have manganese here, manganese here. We have one atom of manganese here and here also one atom of manganese. But on this side, we have oxygen here and on that side we don't have oxygen. And we said to balance for oxygen, we add water to the side with less oxygen. So we're going to add water here, that is H2O, is going to be added to this side. But here you have four atoms of oxygen. And in the water molecule, you have only one atom of oxygen. So meaning we are going to add four molecules of water. So we now have the oxygen atoms to be balanced. But by adding water to the species, we've added a new atom, which is hydrogen and we have to balance the hydrogen. So four by two here is eight. To balance for hydrogen, according to what we learned earlier, we said we add the H plus ions. And four by two is eight, so meaning we are going to add eight H plus ions, okay? So now if you check here, the atoms are balanced. One manganese, one manganese, oxygen four, oxygen four, hydrogen eight, hydrogen eight. So now we check the charges. The charges on this side, this guy has a charge of negative 1. This has a charge of positive 1. You multiply it by the coefficient 8. So plus 1, uh, minus 1 rather, plus 8 will give us plus 7. So total charge on the reactant side is plus 7. Water here is neutral with no charge. Manganese has a charge of plus 2. So total charge on the product side is plus 2. The difference between 7 and 2 is 5. So meaning we are going to add 5 electrons to the side with the highest charge. And plus 7 is higher than 2. So we are going to add 5 electrons to this side. Okay. So now we have atoms balanced and charges balanced for the separate half equations. But if you watch here, 1 electron is lost and here 5 electrons are gained. And we must match because in any reaction, if five electrons are lost, then five electrons have to be gained. It is impossible for an electron to be lost and five electrons gained. So what we do 
like we work for a simultaneous equation, we're going to multiply here by 5 because there's 5 electrons, and we'll multiply here by 1 because this is an electron. So we just have to multiply this by 5 because multiplying this by 1 is the same thing. So we now have 5Fe2 plus will give us 5Fe3 plus and then 5 electrons. So we have here MnO4 minus plus 8 hydrogen ions plus 5 electrons to give us Mn2 plus and 4 molecules of water. So now what we are going to do, we are going to add these equations together. By adding, we are going to cancel the common stuff. We have five electron here, five electron here. So they're going to cancel. And we write everything we have on the reactant side here for both the oxidation and the reduction. So we'll say 5Fe2+, plus. that's 5 ferric ion. And 1 tetraoxomanganate 7. So this is aqueous, this is aqueous, plus 8 hydrogen ions aqueous to produce 5 ferrous ion. And then the manganese ion aqueous and 4 molecules of water liquid. Okay, so this is the balanced equation that we have for this particular process so after balancing you can check as beginners how you do your check to check and see if your equation is correct you're going to check on the reactant side and you check on the product side on the reactant side you check for atoms and also you check for the charge on the product side you check for atoms and you check for the charge it does not mean you have to display it when you're writing exams. You don't have to do this at all. It is for your practice, okay, to boost up your self-confidence to know that you're actually learning it. So the atoms we have here, we have ion, we have manganese, we have oxygen, and we have hydrogen. Similarly, the atoms we have here, we have ion, we have manganese we have oxygen and we have hydrogen so the number of ions we have is five number of manganese we have is one the number of oxygen we have is four the number of hydrogen we have is eight the number of ions we have is five the number of manganese we have is one the number of oxygen we have is four and the number of hydrogen we have is eight so you find out that what the atoms are balance now you check for the charge we're having a charge of plus two here plus two by five gives us plus ten and here we have plus one by eight gives us plus eight and negative one so this is plus 18 minus one that is plus 17 and we come over on the side here we have plus three the number here is five so three by five is 15 and then here we have plus two so this gives us a total of positive 17. So atoms are balanced, charges are balanced. So that tells us that this equation is a balanced equation. Let's look at one another example. Okay, we have the second example on the board here. Of course, you have the iodide ion reacting with the tetraoxo bromates, seven here, and then this produces iodine and the bromide ion. So the first thing we do is we assign oxidation numbers. Of course, this is a monoatomic ion oxidation number minus one, oxygen here, minus two, and bromine is going to be plus seven. And here, the iodine is zero, and the bromide here, negative one. So we write down the species that has undergone oxidation by writing the oxidation half equation. So the oxidation half here, we identify the species that have oxidized. Iodide ion have oxidized into the iodine molecule by increasing in charge, whereas the bromine here have reduced into the bromide ion by decreasing in charge. 
So we say here, I minus has become I2. So we try to balance this one here. Here we have two atoms of iodine, and here it's just an atom. So we place two in front of this. By placing two in front of this, the atoms are now balanced. We try to balance the charge. Here we have a total charge of negative one times two, that is negative two. And here we have a charge of zero. So the difference between two and zero is two, meaning we are going to add two electrons. We add it to the side with the highest charge. Zero is having a higher charge than this. So we're gonna, gonna add two electrons to this side, okay? So now we write down the reduction half. The reduction half equation here mean the tetraoxobromate 7 is reduced into the bromide ion. So with this, we have one bromine, one bromine. Here we have four atoms of oxygen and here no atom of oxygen. So what we do, we are going to add four molecules of water because we know in every molecule of water, we have two atoms of hydrogen and an atom of oxygen. Adding water here, we've introduced a new species that is hydrogen. And four by two is eight. So it is eight hydrogen atoms. So to balance for eight, we add eight hydrogen ions on this side. So adding eight hydrogen ions on the side, now we have the atoms to be balanced. So now we balance the charge. The charge is negative one, and this is positive one by eight plus a. So Minus 1 plus 8 gives us plus 7. And on this side, the charge we have is negative 1. So the difference between plus 7 and negative 1 is 8. Because plus 7 minus into minus 1 will give us plus 8. Okay. So meaning we are going to add 8 electrons to the side with the highest charge. We're going to add 8 electrons to this side. So adding 8 electrons to the side. We now have everything to be balanced. Atoms balanced and charges balanced. So next, we ensure that we merge the electrons lost and electrons gained. Two electrons are lost here. Eight electrons are gained here. So what we do, we have to multiply here by eight and here by two. But two is a factor of eight. So we are just going to multiply here by four. Okay? So if we work that one out, we are going to get eight iodide ions to give us four iodine molecules and eight electrons. So this will give us the tetraoxobromate seven ion plus eight hydrogen ions plus eight electrons to give us the bromide ion and four molecules of water. So now we can add these two equations together. Eight electrons and eight electrons will cancel. We have here eight iodide ions plus the tetraoxobromate ion and then eight hydrogen ions here to produce four molecules of iodine, one mole of the bromide ion and four moles of water. So the state function here is aqueous, aqueous, aqueous. This one is solid. This is aqueous and this one is liquid okay so this is the balanced equation for this species